Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I am going to discuss a topic which has been suggested by a viewer and this is a person who has finished his PhD, finished his postdoc and is not able to get a new postdoc, his postdoc is expiring and so on. So in this kind of circumstance what can you do to improve your chances for furthering your career and keeping your career going. So I am going to give you some tactics here and these tactics are those which I have learned from my own research as well as from personal experience. So I will give you I think six tactics and the seventh is kind of a bonus tactic. So do stay till the end of the video to know all these points. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is that whenever you are a PhD or a postdoc you need to apply globally and so let's split this problem into two parts. The first thing that you should do is of course apply to whichever country you are currently in. So that is the country where your chances are probably going to be the best provided you have the reasonable citizenship or visa status. And once this is not panning out or things are not going very well, I would suggest that you expand your search to the OECD countries. And the OECD countries are essentially a group of developed countries. These are essentially countries which have relatively free markets, democracies and so on. And some of these countries you are aware of, for example, US, Australia, Canada, France, Germany, Korea, Netherlands, New Zealand, Norway. But some of them you may not be so familiar with, for example, Mexico, Colombia, Estonia, Finland, Turkey, Greece and so on. So essentially I will suggest to you that you apply to all these countries at different universities and research institutions because do remember that most of the recruitment which takes place at the PhD and postdoc level is not fixed as far as the country is concerned in the sense that they are open to people of all nationalities and I am going to give you the list of these countries in the description box. Now the next stage is if you have applied to many of the OECD countries and you are not getting much traction from there then you can apply to the BRICS countries and these are also a bunch of countries which are coming up they are growing very rapidly and so they also will provide you a lot of opportunities in terms of postdoctoral positions, faculty positions, research jobs and so on. So these are Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa and also some newer countries such as the UAE, Saudi, Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia and Iran. Now at this time all these countries may not be at the level of getting people or supporting foreign students but they may do so in the future and if you are somebody who is living in a neighboring country then you can certainly consider them. For example if you are living in Brazil there is no problem in considering Argentina and if you are living in Morocco you could certainly consider going to Egypt or Saudi or UAE. So do not rule these things out immediately. There are a lot of possibilities here especially do remember that China is growing very fast and so there are a lot of possibilities of getting funding in China and the same can be said about India, Brazil also and to some extent Russia. Now the third possibility is that there are a whole bunch of jobs in government bodies such as the United Nations, World Bank, World Health Organization, United Nations Development Program, UNICEF, the Asian Development Bank, the New Development Bank and so on which are open to people from all countries. So I knew a person who actually was doing a PhD in economics and they were easily able to get a job in the World Bank. So again these kind of jobs are easily possible. Also remember that you can also get jobs at different embassies, consulates and think tanks. So very often these recruit PhDs and they are open to nationalities of all countries. So consider these possibilities also go to the web page of the United Nations and different bodies and check out the various 
jobs short term programs and internships which are out there now the fourth possibility is apply to non profits foundations and publishers now you know that there are many non profits out there which give out funding for research for example there is the ford foundation there is the bill gates and melinda gates foundation and so on and if you explore the different parts of the internet you will find that there are a plethora of such foundations out there and these foundations often have positions which are open and many of them recruit phd so keep these in mind same thing can be said about various non profits this could even include situations in hospitals in medical centers in research centers doing interdisciplinary research and so on also there are various publishers which are open to phd's and they can use them as soliciting editors for any of their journals so what happens is that many books journals and so on are always looking for new papers for new titles for new authors and so on and so they require phd's to essentially go through these things and solicit this kind of literature now the fifth point which is of course the most important point is that you can apply to a lot of companies the industry and the private sector so whatever be your discipline there is going to be a plethora of jobs out there in the industry and the company set up in that area and even in the adjacent areas for example if you are somebody who has done his degree in aerospace engineering do not shirk from applying to jobs in mechanical engineering electrical engineering and even in computer related professions because nowadays there is a lot of interdisciplinarity in the research and therefore you can easily use your skills in nearby disciplines also do make it a point that when you are doing your phd and postdoc learn some practical skills such as python and python programming language will help you to get many data science jobs also you can very easily learn a certain language known as sql or sql which is used to retrieve data from databases and this is going to also help you in your research because a lot of the data nowadays is stored in relational databases so remember sql python pandas if you are able to learn some aspects of machine learning using scikit learn or pytorch or tensorflow there are a lot of tutorials in youtube itself on these topics and you can learn them from free you can try to integrate them in your research while you are doing the phd or postdoc and this will allow you to apply to the very fertile and open markets which are out there in data science so you will be able to get jobs not only in software but also in healthcare in the financial system in it and a plethora of domains now point number 6 is there are a lot of jobs for adjunct professors and visiting professors and these are essentially temporary jobs which pay you to teach a course or more than one course at a nearby university so while you have finished your postdoc you are not able to get a job you can consider becoming an adjunct professor at any nearby institution and what this is going to do is that it's going to give you some more time to apply for a regular position so it's quite easy to get a job where you teach something like say engineering mathematics or psychology or mechanics of solids at a nearby university and by doing so you can keep your resume alive so that's one more strategy which you can use and if you are really pressed for getting a job you can even consider teaching math in a high school setting or chemistry or physics for that matter or any computer programming language remember many schools are always looking for people to teach classes in c++ python java and some of these languages so make it a point that you know some of these languages so you can use this in your class here now the number 7th point is the one which is going out on your own and increasingly i see more and more phd student and postdocs doing that they are starting their own companies they are starting startups in the ai domain in the edtech domain that is educational technology in fintech and so on so what happens is that either you or a couple of people maybe 3 4 people get together and you can start your own company and this has become possible because there is a lot of venture capital funding out there which is 
ready to fund you if you come up with a good idea and a good business plan. So while you are doing your postdoc or PhD, do spend some time looking around the campus at some of the bodies which are doing the various incubation of new startup themes. Go to some of these lectures where people talk about how to set up a company and how to become an entrepreneur. So this is a possibility which is totally dependent on you. That means if you are not able to get any job, if you do not have a visa to work in a place, you can always go back to your home country and set up your own company. So do not rule this possibility out. Many people have started out with some thing very simple. For example, they may just be teaching in a coaching institute and after some time they start a YouTube channel and after some time they have started some startup which is actually doing very well in the ed tech space. So for example, many people such as the Khan Academy or the Physics Wala and so many other people have started out in this manner. So again, that's something to keep in mind. Now the final point I will tell you is that you are in very difficult straits. You are not able to get job at all. You are probably sitting in your parents' home. Then one of the ways to keep your resume going is to take some certifications. And so there are many certifications out there. For example, there are the Google certifications on data analytics and on project management and I have made a video on that about how to keep your resume going specifically targeted to many of the women who are not able to work in the US for example who, those who are on H4 or L2 visas and so on but again that video is going to be useful to all the other people concerned also if you have a period of one year where you are not able to get employment you can spend this time doing certifications while you are looking for a job and garnering some new skills. So you can do some of these things simultaneously. You can, for example, be an adjunct professor at a nearby university or be teaching a course. You can teach something at a coaching institute and you can be doing Google certification on the side also. So these things will help you get a position. So if you benefit from any of these facts, then do like my video and also give some comments about your specific experiences on some of these matters and that will help the other people also in this channel. So I'll end this video now and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.